Hello and welcome back. I'm Dr. Mark D. Baldwin and I'd simply like to read you some Whitman and Dickinson today, somewhat informal. Um, I believe it helps to hear these great poems read aloud, just as I did with the Romantic poets. So that's what we'll do. If you turn uh, to Walt Whitman from Song of Myself and follow along, Song of Myself number one. I celebrate myself and sing myself, and what I assume you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. I loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. My tongue, every atom of my blood formed from this soil, this air, born here of parents, born here from parents the same, and their parents the same. I, now thirty-seven years old, in perfect health, begin hoping to cease not till death. Creeds and schools in abeyance, retiring back a while, sufficed at what they are, but never forgotten, I harbor for good or bad. I permit to speak at every hazard, nature without check, with original energy. Before I read number 21, uh, notice uh, as you're evaluating, analyzing, and uh, rereading number 1, uh, several times hopefully, notice the universality, the democracy, the sense of transcendentalism, again, that what I assume you shall assume, we're all the same here. And notice the summer grass spear that he's talking about. This title of the book, of course, was Leaves of Grass. And Whitman's point there is that a simple leaf of grass is microcosmically just as complex and amazing, miraculous achievement as all the universe. So let's look at number 21 now, if you will. I am the poet of the body, and I am the poet of the soul. The pleasures of heaven are with me, and the pains of hell are with me. The first I graft and increase upon myself. The latter I translate into a new tongue. I am the poet of the woman, the same as the man. And I say it is as great to be a woman as to be a man. And I say there is nothing greater than the mother of men. I chant the chant of dilation or pride. We have had ducking and deprecating about enough. I show that size is only development. Have you outstripped the rest? Are you the president? <laughs> it's a trifle. They will more than arrive there every one and still pass on. I am he that walks with the tender and growing night. I call to the earth and see, half held by the night. Press close, bare bosom night. Press close, magnetic, nourishing night. Night of south winds. Night of the large few stars. Still nodding night. Mad naked summer night. Smile, O oh, voluptuous, cool-breathed earth. Earth of the slumbering and liquid trees. Earth of departed sunset, earth of the mountains misty-topped, earth of the virtuous pour of the full moon just tinged with blue, earth of shine, dark mottling the tide of the river, earth of the limpid gray of clouds, brighter and clearer for my sake, far swooping elbowed earth, rich apple-blossomed earth, smile for your lover comes. Prodigal? You have given me love, therefore I to you give love, O oh, unspeakable, passionate love. Yeah, number 21 was a good one too, wasn't it? Uh, the poet of the body, the poet of the soul. You see the materialism and the spiritualism there? Uh, and again, the transcendentalist uh, notion that we're all one, we're all the same, our differences are very uh, slight. I love his celebration of motherhood in the second stanza that he uh, appreciates women and can uh, sensitize uh, himself and be a modern man. And n notice uh, something else. All, all, the, all these things I'm asking you to notice I mentioned in the notes on Whitman, of course, but uh, how Whitman loves to milk, to tease, to uh, really exhaust an idea with a repetition Right in in this case uh, the night in the fifth stanza and in the sixth stanza the earth he tries to get at 
a subject from as many different angles as he possibly can. Let's look at 24 now. And notice also the, the, the macrocosmic idea here. Walt Whitman, a cosmos of Manhattan the sun, turbulent, fleshy, sensual, eating, drinking, and breeding. No sentimentalist, no stander above men and women or apart from them. No more modest than immodest. Unscrew the locks from the doors. Unscrew the doors themselves from their jams. Whoever degrades another degrades me, and whatever is done or said returns at last to me. Through me the afflatus surging and surging, through me the current and index. I speak the password primeval. I give the sign of democracy. By God, I will accept nothing which all cannot have their counterpart of on the same terms. Number 24 was was great too. I'm getting repetitious here. I just I just love all all of this material. Uh, Whitman is uh, one of my all time top of the line favorites here with his uh, incredible voice. What a voice! Huh? What a personality! It just shines right through the poetry, doesn't it? He's a cosmos. <laughs> he is uh, again. Don't don't misread this and think that this is pride or hubris or arrogance here. This is a Whitman, the poet, attempting to say that he is a representative man, that we all are, and his voice is simply the one that's being recorded here in the poetry. Uh, the, de the democratic aspect of it here, that uh, we're all the same, and, and uh, he'll accept nothing which all cannot have their counterpart of on the same terms. We have uh, equality, or at least we should have, and respect. Let's look at number 52, the last one I want to read uh, from Whitman. The spotted hawk swoops by and accuses me. He complains of my gab and my loitering. I, too, am not a bit tamed. I, too, am untranslatable. I sound my barbaric yop over the ruse of the world. The last scud of day holds back for me. It flings my likeness after the rest, and true as any on the shadowed wilds, it coaxes me to the vapor in the dusk. I depart as air. I shake my white locks at the runaway sun. I effuse my flesh in eddies and drift it in lacy jags. I bequeath myself to the dirt to grow from the grass I love. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. You will hardly know who I am or what I mean, but I shall be good health to you nevertheless and filter and fiber your blood. Failing to fetch me at first, keep encouraged. Missing me one place, search another. I stop somewhere waiting for you. Well, that's the conclusion of uh, Song of Myself, and quite a conclusion. Seems to indicate, seems to imply, does it not, that uh, we all go through stages of life, and perhaps, the last stanza here, perhaps you're just not ready for Whitman. Perhaps you can't relate. But if you come back to him later, a year from now, five years from now, maybe he'll speak to you a little bit. For he is America, the voice of America. He's in the soil, line 10. If you want me again, look for me under your boot soles. See, now this is a brilliant thing uh, that he did here. He, he predicted his own immortality as a poet. He knew he was good. It's almost like Michael Jordan uh, taking the ball and saying, I'm going to hit a th uh, three-pointer from outside the circle. And, and sure enough, he does. Uh, or it's almost like uh, Babe Ruth pointing at the stands, the, the famous mythical um, prediction of a home run. If you do it, uh, then it's not bragging. And he did it. We're reading him now, and we're reading him now justifiably. Uh, there's, you'd be hard-pressed to point to a better poet. Uh, certainly he's not for everybody, as poets aren't. But as far as his accomplishment as a poet, and his excellent and his sweeping um, voice that takes in just about everything and his cataloging of America. There's, uh, he's second to none. Let's turn our attention now to Emily Dickinson. Dickinson is, is a great bookend uh, in oppositional way, that is, for Whitman, since she's microcosmic to his macrocosmic voice. 
uh, yet don't underestimate her. She, uh, despite the fact that she never went outside the uh, town limits of Amherst, Massachusetts, more than a few times in her life, she traveled the world round in her mind and in her soul. Uh, her her little poems are just little jewels, sparkling, amazing talents. I'd like to read uh, 435 first, and I'm going to read all of them in this one slide here and say a few remarks. 435. Much madness is divinest sense to a discerning eye, much sense the starkest madness. Tis the majority in this, as all, prevail. Assent, and you are sane. Demure, you're straightway dangerous and handled with a chain. Uh, great uh, message there about orthodoxy and conformity and how if we just go along with the crowd, uh, we can blend in. But boy... If we don't, uh, we can uh, attract some negative attention, perhaps. Number 632, the brain is wider than the sky. For put them side by side, the one the other will contain with ease, and you beside. The brain is deeper than the sea. For hold them blue to blue, the one the other will absorb as sponges buckets do. The brain is just the weight of God. For heft them pound for pound, and they will differ if they do as syllable from sound. Whew, that's amazing. Um, the brain is wider than the sky. Again, perhaps that's a uh, testimony to the power of the intellect, the power of the imagination. Uh, similar to, to uh, Keats, if you recall, said that unheard melodies are sweeter. Right? And uh, how the brain is just the weight of God just the weight of God. They differ if they do a syllable from sound. Syllable from sound. God is all sound, all possibility, and our brain is just one little example, one little piece of God, such as a syllable is one little piece of sound, one subset of sound, if you will. 754 my life had stood a loaded gun in corners till a day. The owner passed, identified, and carried me away. And now we roam in sovereign woods, and now we hunt the doe. And every time I speak for him, the mountains straight reply. And do I smile such cordial light upon the valley glow? It is a Vesuvian face, had let its pleasure through. And what at night, our good day done, I guard my master's head. Tis better than the eider duck's deep pillow to have shared foe of his i'm deadly foe none stir the second time on whom i lay a yellow eye or an emphatic thumb the why then he may longer live he longer must than i for i have but the power to kill without the power to die boy there's some beautiful possible symbolisms and ideas in there aren't they well i mean what's the gun who's the owner what's the knight who's the master's head uh, who's the enemy and what does she mean by the power to kill without the power to die? Uh, this is a perfect example of Keats's negative capability here. Don't be frustrated because you can't figure it all out. Just uh, play with it a little bit. Poetry and the explication of poetry is an intellectual puzzle. And uh, just uh, see what you can dig out of it and what possibilities you can, you can uh, ascertain. And the last one, 1129. Tell all the truth. But tell it slant, success and circuit lies, too bright for our infirm delight, the truth's superb surprise, as lightning to the children eased with explanation kind, the truth must dazzle gradually, or every man be blind. Wow. Uh, sometimes it's necessary to um, go around the subject a little bit, a little white lie, perhaps, or you don't have to tell everything. If somebody says to you, uh, how do you like my new haircut? Uh, you're going to say, yeah, it stinks. It's terrible. You might just say, mm, it's fine. It's nice. And perhaps they'll get the message from your diplomatic response, less than exuberant over the new hairstyle. Uh, sometimes we can just be blinded by the truth. Well, that, en that ends the reading here, Dickinson and Whitman. I uh, enjoyed it. Once again, I could read this stuff all day long. I hope you got a little bit out of it, and it's helpful to you. And
Thanks for your attention and good luck with your studies.